hello and welcome back to this channel so in today's tutorial you're gonna learn how to create this paper cut or 3d effect using adobe fresco we're also going to go ahead and try and make a few different things using different shape like this one and this one by the way this was requested by one of you guys and uh, as far as i know it's pretty easy to do it in procreate but today we're going to learn how to do it with fresco because fresco doesn't have the same tools as procreate so let's just get started okay i'm going to click on create new and in here I'll go into digital and click on square. So let's start off our design by using the circle design. First of all, go ahead and update your fresco if you haven't because some tools might be a little different for you right now. For example, you might not see this grid, etc. So make sure you go ahead and update it and then come back and watch this video. All right, so let's start off. The first thing to do is pick a color palette. As usual, I have few color palettes for you guys so that you can experiment with different colors. So let's go ahead and bring in the colors now. Once you have downloaded the colors from the link in the description box below, it'll get saved to your photos. So click on this images here, go to your photos and bring it in. So you might not see so many colors because I have kind of experimented with it. So I have a bit too many colors here. So I'm gonna pick up some colors so that I can add it to my palettes. Once you're here, click on done. And now all you have to do to pick these colors is to click and hold. And when you do that, you see this icon pop up. So now leave your finger like that. And now if you just make a mark on your artboard, it doesn't matter which brush you're on, it automatically creates a new layer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to all the colors that we wanna pick. Okay, I think I'm done with my color picking. So once you're done with that, you can click on this I button here to hide that layer. You can do the same thing for the layer with the image hide it now let's go ahead and click on a new layer or if you have a new layer here use this if you don't click on this plus to create a new layer we'll be using the selection tool or the lasso tool here to create our circles so just click on this and click on again and then you'll see so many options right here so for this experiment i'm going to pick a circle i'm going to click on that and make sure you are on this option right here and not the next one it doesn't really matter i guess but i would like you to choose this so that everybody gets the same design as me Okay, so once you have the circle, you're gonna go ahead and make some circles on the screen. That is, you just click and drag and it kind of creates circles like this. And once it does that, you see that the all other regions are highlighted. So your artwork might not look like this. That's because your selection tool is set to a different thing. That is, if you come here, there's something called as more. Just click on that and you see, I've set it to selection overlay. Yours might be set to marching ants, which will show up like this. That is okay too. It does not matter. It's just the way it is shown. That's all. But if you want, you can go ahead and click on selection overlay so that you know exactly where your circles are selected. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a few more circles. But right now, remember this, your circle should be of varied sizes. They should not be like uniform. Some of them can be small. Some of them can be big. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw some circles. I would suggest drawing the bigger circles first and then filling it up with smaller circles. Just use your two fingers to zoom out like that. By the way, if you make any mistakes, you can always use your two finger tap to undo things. Okay, I think I'm happy with my circles. So now what you can do is you have to go into more and click on invert selection. So what this does is it selects everything else except the circles and this is exactly what we want. Now let's go to the fill tool and we're gonna choose our first color. That is, I want you to choose this orange and then we're going to fill it in. And we're going to make it vector. Why not? You can always convert it to pixel if you want to, you know. So once this is done and make sure you Add any edges that you have in the like in the corners and once this is done click on deselect and your first set is ready but before that we need to put a background to this so I'm gonna go here and click on a new layer and click and hold so that it gets highlighted and bring it below right here and we'll go to our darkest red that we have and fill it in and vector and now let's go ahead and add shadows and other things to this okay so I'm going to go ahead into this layer which has the red color and click on a new layer 
So let's go to this pixel brush here, click on that and you have to go into basic and you see something called as round, soft round opacity, just click on that. We'll be using that brush to add our shadows. So we're going to go ahead and set this one to about 170s. Uh, you can do this or you can also press and hold so that you get this nice little keypad and you can press whatever number you want like that. And for color, we're going to obviously choose black and my flow is set to 14. It's up to you. You can decide on what you want it to be. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw a shadow like this wherever there is a circle like even if it's a small one you know just go ahead and draw a shadow like this so let me just show you what i'm doing right now i'll uncheck this and i will uncheck this as well and you can see i'm making a shadow like wherever the circle is right so let me go ahead and check this back in and this as well and i'm going to do that to all the circles right here by the way don't put too much pressure like i did here so I'm going to undo this. You can use this technique to draw cheese, by the way. Okay, so I'm done with all my circles. Sometimes when you are trying to use a different size artboard, this shadow setting might not give you the results. So in case you have that issue and your shadows seem very strong, there's always this option where you can go and smudge them. But make sure you choose smudging brush, go into dry media and graphite. And instead of using the brush, use your finger because that gives a completely different kind of an effect. Okay, make sure you do that. So try it out if you feel like your shadows are not coming really well. The other trick for shadows is using the opacity. That is, you can go into, make sure you're in the shadow layer, by the way, and then go into these levels here and you can reduce the opacity if you feel like they are too dark and no matter what you do, you're not getting the right kind of an effect. Okay, now that we have put our shadows, let's try to add some highlights. So go on top of the layer, which has the color, that's this orange, click on a new layer. And we're going to click on this icon right here, which is nothing but the clipping mask. So what this makes sure is we don't have put things anywhere apart from this layer. For example, if I take, let me just take white because that's what I need. I'm going back into the brush. That is the shadow brush that I have. And for example, if this was not a clipping mask, if I do this, it'll come up all the way everywhere, right? So undo that. Let me do that. And now if I press on clipping mask, it just goes on the area where, you know, this orange color is. So that's exactly what we want. Okay. So let me undo that. Okay. And make this clipping mask. And now I'm going to add a shadow only to this part of the circle. You see this part. It's very subtle. Um, it's, it's really, really subtle, by the way. I don't even know if you can see it on the screen. Add a little bit and only in that direction by the way let me just quickly show you what am I doing I'm just putting shadow like this in this direction okay I think my shadows are ready and it's time to actually group them together now I'll tell you why so now let's go ahead click on this three dot but before that make sure you're in one of these layers it could be the shadow layer the actual layer or the clipping mask click on three dots here click on select multiple and now click on all three things that is the main layer shadow layer and the clipping mask and click on this folder icon to group them together so now if you hide this you can see that you have hidden that complete thing okay and now let's go ahead and duplicate it click on that layer and click on duplicate layer group now it creates one more layer group and you see it's very dark right that's because there's two layers on top of each other especially the shadow ones now click on the transform tool and it brings in this box now you have a handle here which helps you rotate so you're going to rotate it just once so before you do that let me just go ahead here click on this grid icon here and make sure you have set rotation snapping and you've set it to 90 degrees okay and then click back so that you're here hmm? click on your transform tool now and now we're going to go ahead and rotate it and you see the angle right in the center don't worry about that because once you come to 90 it's going to snap and that's exactly what we want okay so we are snapped here and that's great now click on done now we are going to double click on it so that it will go into the layer group 
now click on the layer which has the orange thing by the way if this is too confusing for you you can go back here and hide this original layer and use the second layer that's the top layer go here let's select yellow now this yellow go to your fill tool and click here to fill that region with the yellow okay now go back and now you can turn this back on okay that looks good and now if you feel like the shadows are not that great like you know they're not very deep or something you can go ahead and try to make it again oh by the way don't leave out this corner so i'm going to go in here click here and click on this so that that corner is filled as well so go back here now click and duplicate layer group it's again on top now click on the transform tool and we're going to again rotate it 190 degree like this and click on done now go inside i'm going to go ahead and choose this pale yellow and go to this layer and color it in so that it shows up like this so there's one more thing you can do you can go out of the layer group click on transform and increase this size a bit so that it creates a different kind of an effect like that okay it's it's up to you actually i'm going to undo that i just want this to be like this click on done and that's it you have actually created your pattern now if i just remove this and do this and do that you can see that it's like a 3d effect with shadows and things you can always go back and edit your things like for example i'll just go back to the layers here and now if i want to change the color or if i want to oh wait a minute we left out this corner okay now it looks good if you want to add more shadows for example here i feel like i think i need to add more shadows so i'm going to go back into black and go back into my shadow brush obviously and then i can go ahead and add a bit of shadows here like that it doesn't matter it's our artwork we can do whatever we want right because sometimes the shadows depend on the color that you have so that's it that's super easy now you created your own very trippy looking pattern but yeah, one alternate thing that you could do is you could make all these things in different sizes. That is, let me go to this orange one and let it be this size. It's okay. Let's go to the yellow one and click on this transform. I'm going to bring it down a little notch and I'm going to make it a little bigger, little bigger like this. Okay. And click on here like that and click on done and continue because all these things will be cropped. So if you don't see this, that means that I'm going to continue. So there's an option here called as Art v Artboard Preview. So if you uncheck this, you can see everything that's beyond your artboard as well. But I like to keep it checked because um, then I can see exactly what I'm going to get out of this artwork. Okay. So then we'll go to the yellow layer and I'm going to click on Transform again and make this even more bigger. Something like this. Maybe arrange it a little bit. Or maybe, you know what, no need so big, maybe like that, but I'll arrange it so that, you know, it looks a bit different. And you can also turn it around to match your things. You can't obviously do 45 degrees and all because, you know, okay, this seems to cover everything. Click on done, continue and see you've created your own different version of it so that, you know, it's not overlapping or something like that. Okay, so that was the first one using circles. So you could do the same thing with squares and only thing that you have to do is instead of circles here, you have to click on square and then you'll be able to create the exact same thing. And I'll show you exactly how it looks. And that could look something like this. You can always choose different colors by the way. And uh, you can make multiple layers. For example, I just made three layers and you can still go on and on and on and make a lot of layers like begin with the layer which is like with really tiny circles and then go ahead and keep increasing the size to create bigger and bigger circles you can do that as well so you could also do the same thing using this brush here and I'll, let me just show you how it looks like so this is how it would look like i mean i could do a better job actually i wasn't very careful see how bad this thing is but you could create something like this as well the principle is really same but only thing with this brush is when you click on this option here you get to control the size of this 
unique uh, you know selection tool that is let me just go ahead and so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck all these just so that you can see now okay let's go here now use this brush and I've set it to 80 you can use anything I think 80 was the thing which I used to create that artwork as well so now you can just you know select things like this create a few of these like that like this and then click on this and invert selection now everything is inverted and use the fill tool Let me make it bright pink and then you can fill it up like this and then deselect and you see now you have this artwork ready and you can add shadows again and control everything that you want to control okay so that would basically be the same way as circle and everything okay so now the next thing is what do we do if we want a completely different shape i'm going to show you that in the next tutorial because it is a bit of a process i hope you like this tutorial and if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified every time i post a new video you can support this channel by buying me a coffee on coffee.com you can find the link to do that in the description box below or you can also share this video with your friends or family or anybody who's interested in Adobe Fresco. It will really help my channel grow a bit. If you do create something using one of my tutorials, don't forget to tag me on Instagram with print me some color or think beyond color as I would love to check it out. Okay, I guess I'll see you in the next video then. That is a part two of this. Bye-bye.